Welcome uh, to the lecture 2 of module 1. In the lecture 1, we just give an introductory lecture on uh, basic difference between iron and steel and basic definition of iron making, steel making and the basic thermodynamics involved into the iron making and steel making process. Now, today I will just talk about the various routes of steel making today available into the market. So, the major routes of steel making is basically by the BFBF route. BF stands for blast furnace as you know that is uh, uh, blast furnace, BF stands for blast furnace. And that is the BOF, BOF stands for basic oxygen furnace, basic oxygen furnace. Okay. So, BFBF route is the very most dominant uh, steel making route, blast furnace and the basic oxygen furnace. Basic oxygen furnace is also popularly known as the LD furnace. LD furnace. Okay. So, so, this route, this is one route. Another route is called the DRIEF route and here the DRI stands for basically DRI, DRI, DRI stands for direct reduced iron. Direct reduced iron and EAF as you know the electric arc furnace, EAF is the electric arc furnace. That is the source, electrical source is there for melting. So, that is the DRIAF route. In the DRIAF route, basically the sponge iron is melted along with the hot metal into the electric arc furnace. And another route is there that is called the smelting reduction route. And uh, uh, in this route, the process mainly the codex process codex, codex process and then phoenix, these are commercialized process. Codex is most well known or the most well known commercialized melting reduction furnace, even in India it is available. Uh, phoenix process is also there, we will talk about later on. And there are several other processes has come on smelting reduction, but commercialized process may be the codex, phoenix and this thing. And you have some potential direct steel making route although no commercial process is available today. Okay, next let us discuss about what is that BFBF route. So, BFBF route we have the blast furnace and then in the blast furnace what are the input? Inputs are you have a coke as input, carbon is because blast furnace as we have discussed it is in carbothermic reduction of iron oxide basically the iron ore, iron oxide. So, you have coke as an input, you have another input is the sinter that is the agglomerated mass is a better burden for the blast furnace. Okay. And then you have calibrated lumpy iron ore also is there, there is a run of mine nodes. Run of mine sword means from the mines you can have some uh, lumpy ore which are calibrated in size like 40 millimeter size ore that is called the calibrated lumpy iron ore that is also there. Some lumpy iron ore is also a feed, sinter is also a feed, coke is a feed. And then you have to add some amount of flux also because in the blast furnace as we said that is the gang is removed in the form of a slag. Okay. So, that is why some flux is required to make the slag metal separation. And then coke that you add into the blast furnace that also you require a coke oven because some coking coal is there. Cooking coal is the input to the coke oven and that gives the coke and coke only can be charged into the blast furnace. It is not coal. Coal cannot be directly charged into the blast furnace. You require a coke oven that can convert a special grade of coal called the cooking coal that can be converted to coke and then the coke can be charged into the blast furnace. So, any types of the carbon source in the blast furnace that is the reductant is used in the form of a coke in the blast furnace and then sinter plant is required basically for undersize ore that you can do that. 
if you have undersized ore then you can sinter it this is basically agglomerate it and then you can get a better burden like sinter it is a better than lumpy ore also as compared to the share that is the your strength as well as reactivity is concerned okay sinter is a better than lumpy ore so so blast furnace these are the input and then what are the output you get you get the liquid slang and the liquid iron these are the two output from the blast furnace and that liquid slag also can be directly blast furnace slag composition is such that uh, it can be directly used into the cement making where the liquid iron whatever you get and then you can transfer it to the basic oxygen furnace that is called the LD furnace or the basic oxygen furnace that is the steel making furnace where the liquid iron is charged along with scrap and the sponge iron up to 25 percent you can use it. And, uh, BOF is an autogenous process, basically chemical reaction that is the impurity oxidation produces the heat that is sufficient to carry on the whole process. Not only that, it generates some excess heat also and by that excess heat you can use some kind of the cold charge or the solid charge like scrap and sponge iron also you can take up to 25 percent of the total 25 percent of the charge can constitute the solid charge because some excess heat is there that can be used up to melt those. And also in the BF process obviously you are giving the oxygen for impurity oxidation and the flux and what you get basically crude steel, liquid steel is the output, you have also slag as the output. But in the blast, in the LD slag or the BF slag uh, contains FeO and P2O5 significantly, FeO is of the order of around 15 to 18 percent and the P2O5 also significant amount is there. So, because of this, this slag cannot be directly used for the cement making. You have to require some post processing to get that into cement making, but that process has not been found to be very suitable till now. The blast furnace slag, either is the BOF slag does not have much utility still now, but work is going on to use it in a very effective way. So, now, so you can see that this route that is the BFBF route is the most rugged and the efficient process. Most rugged in this sense as you see the blast furnace if you consider the BF furnace both are very efficient furnace. Blast furnace actually from uh, thermal and chemical point of view chemical efficiency thermal efficiency of blast furnace is fantastic. It is a very beautiful reactor only problem in the blast furnace as you can see it requires very stringent raw material requirement. For example, you can see there is the coal cannot be directly charged into the blast furnace. A special type of coal called the coking coal has to be first converted to coke in a coke oven, then that can be charged into the blast furnace. That coke has sufficient strength. Strength is very important in the blast furnace as we will see because the blast furnace is a counter kind gas solid reactor. So, permeability counter current gas solid gas liquid reactor because lower part liquid is also there. So, is the gas permeability is a very important factor in the blast furnace. So, the strength of the material that is the strength of the raw material is very stringent. For example, you can see sinter. Sinter is also in the blast furnace that is a calibrated lumpy ore. Lumpy ore is usually, is usually little bit fragile compared to the sinter and they can break, they can produce the dust and then they can choke the blast furnace. All these problem happen, especially when the burden comes down from the top because of abrasion impact, they may generate the fines and then that can block the passage of the gas. So, those problems are there and also if you have a uh, bad raw material like lot of gang in the raw material, it will produce the lot of slag also and when the slag volume increases in the lower part of the blast furnace, then the gas liquid uh, counter can flow is there that can cause the flooding and different types of problems are there. So, you have to have a very good burden material for the blast furnace to maintain the proper permeability and uh, have the maximum efficiency of the blast furnace, right. So, otherwise, otherwise as we will see the physically the heat exchange uh, the uh, process route is very fantastic and the heat exchange and the chemical exchange in the blast furnace is very good. Only thing is that burden material has to be very good and for that you require a coke oven, ancillary units like coke oven, sinter plant those are the things are required and they pollute the atmosphere. 
So since this is the pollutes, that, the, that is the thing, that is the BF limitation is the dependence on coke and better iron ore burden. And the coke oven center plant pollutes the atmosphere. That is the major problem. And in case of the BF limitation is that limited solid charge. Like since it is an autogenous process, the advantage of BF is that it is an autogenous process. You do not require any external heating. So heat is generated inside. So in situ heat generation is there because of chemical reaction. You are removing the impurity at the same time you are generating the uh, heat. So, so that way is there. And uh, but problem is that in the BOF, since extra some extra heat is generated, you can take solid charge maximum up to 25 percent. But beyond that, you cannot use it. So, but nowadays a lot of solid charge are coming because people are looking for some route that is the DRI route, that is the sponge iron root, solid state reduction route, where you do not require the coking coal like that. That is the coke is not required. So people are looking for a coke free process and then as a result we are getting a lot of solid state reduction process which does not depend on the coking coal or the coke. It can be we can use the non coking coal or we can use uh, even the reform gas to reduce the iron ore. So, and then unutilized BOF slag, another problem is that in the BOF is that the slag is also not utilized so far, we have not been able to do that thing. Now, let us go to the DRIEF route, direct reduced tyrone and the electric car furnace route. Here basically we use rotary kiln or the SAP furnace, basically these are some of the reactor will come to later on and here your feed is non-coking coal. If you, if you have a coal based DRI production unit that is the rotary kiln, it is usually the coal based DRI unit. Basically, you use non coking coal and the iron ore and you heat it up, and then at solid state, you can produce the uh, sponge iron. Or in the shaft furnace, in the shaft furnace, what you do, you basically give some reformed gas, like natural gas, you can reform to Cu and CO2, Cu and H2 and then you can reduce the iron ore, iron ore pellets into the DRI, right. So lumpy ore and also in the set furnace you can, you have to use some pellets are also used and then the product is the sponge iron and sponge iron is just melt into the electric car furnace and you can add some amount of hot metal also to reduce the electric car furnace. Suppose if you integrated steel plant you have option for both the sponge iron as well as the hot metal like you have the blast furnace, then you can mix the charge mix. You can make a better charge mix between the sponge iron, internally generated scrap as well as the hot metal. In any proportion you can use it in the electric car furnace and you can produce the steel. The most advantage is the flexibility with respect to the charge material because any proportion of the hot metal scrap or sponge iron you can use depending on your inventory. So, it do not have any limitation because you can take the 100 percent solid charge because you have a electric source like electric arcing is there. So, you can use 100 percent solid charge also or and to reduce this and if you have hot metal you can combine obviously it is welcome to combine with the hot metal because you can reduce the electricity cost significantly. So, if you have hot metal because hot metal already it is molten and also carries some sensible heat that can be given into the system. So, finally, you can get the liquid steel. So, lim no limitation with the solid charge. You can take any type of an external power supply compared to autogenous UF process. In the BUF process is autogenous chemical heat is generated inside. But in case of electric arc furnace, you have to have electricity. And electricity most of the cases it is fossil fuel based, carbon based. And the generation of electricity that is that is also not efficiency, not very high around 40 percent efficiency from carbon to electric, electricity. So that way uh, the electric car furnace uh, carbon footprint, footprint also quite high unless you take care of this system uh, using hot metal. Then comes the smelting reduction. What is this smelting reduction as we said that is the blast furnace basically if I just see what is the blast furnace. Um, blast furnace look like this somewhat. Uh, So, blast furnace has two types of zones are there, they are basically very, there is a solid come down here solid and hot gas that comes out here 
and here it is also wet zone liquid also start forming ok this is the dry zone and the wet. So, blast fund is basically a solid gas and the liquid is also in the lower part and solid come down and the gas moves up and you have a dry part in the upper part and the wet zone in the lower part there are specifically two zones are there and they get they, does, they are not they are in the same system and the gas is moving up it is interacting both with the liquid in the lower part and the solid with the upper part. So, it is a very complicated reactor gas solid reactor and it is a very efficient that way, but because it is a very complicated because uh, you have gas solid interaction liquid gas interaction in the lower part upper part gas solid. So, in the total system you have to have maintain a good permeability burden per bed permeability is required to be very high and that is why you as I said that is you require a better raw material into the blast furnace that is the coke, sintar, pellets these are very well required burden material also along with that you can use some lumpy iron ore. So, the main item because the main idea here because for also DRI also basically we wanted to reduce the coke consumption that is the if I want to have a coke free process, coke free process one is that coke free if I want to make the coke free process from two point of view one is that that is the coking coal is very scarce commodity that is one thing you can reduce that and that if you can make it coke free then coking coal is not required. Second thing is that coke oven is also not required. So, from environmental point of view it is very good and cost wise also it is very good. So, that is why people are looking for coke free process one is the DRI process in the DRI process there is a solid state iron production that is the DRI sponge iron production that also coke free process either you can use the non coking coal or the uh, what is that called you can use uh, um, reform gas. And in this case this is the smelting reduction idea is to use the non coking coal oxygen and also to reduce the reactor in a single reactor. Everything you melt in the single reactor you take the coal oxygen intense heat you generate and then you charge the ore melt the ore there and after that you carry out the reduction that is the idea of the smelting reduction. So, one single unit you add coal directly coal. So, your coke oven is not there ok and also the coal quality can be no, non coking coal ok non coking coal oxygen you charge in the reactor instead of air blast you directly using the oxygen. So, intense heat you generate charge the ore melt the ore and then you produce the slag and metal and the gas will come out. So, this is the idea it is the process integration. So, all the ancillary of blast furnace you take it out and only one reactor everything. So, everything you melt it. So, if there is no solid and the question of gas permeability is not there everything is liquid and the liquid state you reduce it that is the idea of smelting reduction. And uh, this is uh, in contrast to the blast furnace as I said in the blast furnace you are maintaining a two zone one is the solid dry zone another is the wet zone and these wet zone and dry zone are nicely interfacing each other. So, that is why to maintain this type of complicated uh, structure you require a very high quality of raw material. So, in this case melting reduction you do not have to be raw material you do not have to give weightage. So, you can use non cooking coal you can use ore lump ore nothing is required just you melt everything and reduce that is the idea of the smelting reduction. Mm. So, and this what is there in this case this is the smelting reduction and in this case you have basically uh, two reactor blast furnace you have also the dry zone and the wet zone here also you have kept, but it is totally decoupled that is the reduction zone and melting zone two separate zones are there a two stage reactor here, but they are totally decoupled money that way if they are not connected to each other only they are connected by the input and output right. So, in the melting unit again you are giving the coal and the oxygen and the your instead of over here the DRI is coming from the top reduction reactor. So, reduction reactor giving the DRI and that is getting charged into the melting furnace everything you are melting and then reducing and then you are getting the slag and metal and whatever the off gas from the melting unit that goes into the reduction unit it reduces the iron ore produce the DRI and the rest of the gas come out. So, this is the idea of the smelting reduction this is the two stage smelting reduction it is the most popular because the codex phoenix everything 
come under this category. That is your core X process. And the fine X, I will come about that thing fine X. These are basically two stage, uh, it is not writing very properly, fine X. Okay. So, they are basically the two stage and single stage melting reduction that there nothing is commercialized, but the two stage are to some extent they are commercialized. Codex is commercialized, fine X is commercialized. Okay. So, these two types of uh, reactor is there, another type of is there that is, uh, so another type of reactor is there. They are basically here you do not give the all the coke into the melting unit, a part of the carbon you can gasify and you can give it to the reduction unit and part of the coal you give it to directly to the melting unit. Okay. So, there is a scope for gasification, gasification here separately, okay. but this reactor also not in very use, we will come later on all this process. Now, in brief, this is uh, various routes in a phase diagram type of thing because if I plot on the right, uh, that is the on the y axis, this is the oxygen, it is not seen, this is oxygen, this axis is oxygen and this is the carbon and this is the temperature. And you can find this is the Fe2O3, Fe2O3 contains around 30 percent of oxygen as you know stoichiometrically. And then if you reduce the Fe2O3, what you do in the blast furnace basically you reduce the most of the oxygen, you remove most of the oxygen by 1000 degree centigrade or 1100 degree centigrade, this is the temperature, this is the range. Okay. So, this is around 1100 degree centigrade, your most of the reduction take place in the blast furnace in the dry state at around 1000, just above 1000 degree 1100 degree centigrade. And the rest of the reduction take place in the liquid state around maybe 5 percent or even less than that. So, most of the reduction in the blast furnace take place in the uh, at around 1100 degree centigrade and then basically it is uh, when it goes into the lower part of the furnace it melts and also it get carburized. So, it melts and then there is the portion basically carburizing. So, uh, iron get molten and get carburized. So, you can see the carbon percentage increases and then that is called the hot metal. So, blast furnace as we said that is the most of the solid state reduction take place up to this temperature most of the oxygen has come down to 0 by this temperature around 1100 this year all the oxygen is 0 and then it basically at higher temperature it melts and it get carburized and it gives the hot metal. And what is DRI as you said Fe2O3 and then you can at lower temperature much lower temperature 700, 800 to 900 degree centigrade you can produce the DRI using the reform gas. If you use the um, reform gas. So, by 1000 degree centigrade you can to produce it. So, DRI and then this DRI because DRI because uh, it is comparatively pure compared to the liquid iron because liquid iron in the liquid state carbon diffusion is much faster not only carbon other impurities also goes into that. So, liquid iron is always less pure than the DRI. DRI is much more pure because iron is produced in the solid state and if other impurities from the gangs they do not cannot penetrate into the uh, solid iron easily. So, that is why DRI is as such pure only if you can separate out the gang because so by by crushing grinding you can uh, take out the gang to liberate the gang and some of the gang if it is associated with it during the melting in the electric arc furnace you can take out that gang by fluxing. So, basically the carbon content you can find uh, carbon content is not also very high around maximum it may be 2 percent for the gas based and coal based process it is even less than that. So, so, so the maximum carbon content is very less 0.2 percent may be like that. So, this is and then scrap, scrap you can find almost it is a pure form of iron and then scrap everything you can remelt it produce the liquid steel or you can hot metal, hot metal is the BF process and the BOF process you can refine it and then you can go to the crude steel, crude steel carbon content again you reduce it okay, less than 2 percent and oxygen may be around 1000 ppm oxygen will be there because it is an oxygen process. So, iron will get saturated with the oxygen also. So, around 1000 ppm of uh, oxygen is there in the uh, liquid steel, tap down liquid steel. 
and then smelting reduction what you can find in the smelting reduction this smelting reduction the reduction take place at a very high temperature that is when everything is molten okay in the molten state most of the reduction take place and then you can get the hot metal so you can see directly it is coming like this so all the carbon is increasing and then this is the hot metal so most of the reduction high temperature and and another potential method that is called the direct steel making there the temp process is further higher temperature it is at the further higher temperature you can carry out uh, that is the direct steel making process so there you can directly go to the hot metal uh, that is the steel because they, they are basically there the slag is generated in such a way such that slag also become little oxidizing but you require a little higher temperature for this so these are the basically not sell different uh, various roots of uh, iron making process various roots of prison steel making process so one thing this is a bf bf root as i said bf bf and buf root and then it is the dri scrap and the hot metal ef root is there you can do that thing and then this is the smelting reduction root is there smelting reduction you can get the hot metal and then you can add to the bf you can do that or direct steel making is there so this is the all the process that i wanted to discuss and eventually i will come to all process in the later uh, course of lecture okay with this is just i wanted to give you an um, overview of the different steel making process exist today this is the concluding slide so what we basically the we have talked about various steel making routes and it is evolving basically considering two issues one is called the environmental issue and another is the resource utilization so environmental issue as i said that is the co2 emission and so the aim is there uh, to make the process as uh, uh, involving as less reactor as possible right if you can reduce because each unit process has some co2 emission like in blast furnace you have blast furnace it has ancillaries like coke oven plant sinter plant all produces lot of uh, emissions so if you can combine all this process in a single reactor like that then you can have an idea of reducing some amount of the pollution so that is one idea that is the that is the coke free process people are looking for the coke free process and reducing the number of ancillary units associated with the iron making such that you can reduce the emission second thing is the resource utilization so you have to utilize the resource not only the best resources those are there like best higher grade of iron ores then um, higher grades of coal coal all these things are basically depleting day by day we have to look for the very low grade or lean grade of ore or the sources so for that also the waste solid waste there in 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 steel plant there are different source of iron bearing solid waste we have to look for how we can use it so those solid waste can be used up in the rotary or furnace also to, to produce the dri okay so so those are the things we have to use for that thing that's why people are looking for different routes of dri sponge iron production from the solid waste from the solid waste if you can use it that is the resource utilization and then if you can use the lean grade of ore lean grade of ore so you have to invent some process so dri if we can produce using a comparatively low grade of sub ore so those type of process to are people are looking for and this is so basically various steel making process are evolving considering the environmental issue as well as your resource utilization second thing is that uh, bf bf root still dominating that is the blast fund is bf root still dominating because they are very efficient process only thing is that they are very stringent with the raw materials right but still they are uh, they are going down uh, that is the blast fund is still dominating because of the process efficiency but dri ef is emerging steadily because of dri because the source of sponge iron sponge iron is evolving uh, significantly because of uh, coke free process different coke free process and also to utilize the iron bearing solid waste from the plant that's why the dri technology is coming up and also the lean grade iron ore if you can convert to the dri those are the idea that is uh, coming up so our solid charge uh, solid metallics is also coming up hugely into the industry 
and then so DRI EF process and then EF is the melting furnace. So where you can EF is important because in EF you can charge any kind of solid and the liquid uh, burden any proportion. That's why this DRI EF route is coming up very nicely. Nowadays several plants are there. There are both sorts of metrics like the solid metrics like DRI as well as you have a liquid hot metal. So, so this is the DRIEF is emerging steadily. Second thing is that your some smelting reduction routes like Codex has also been commercialized. As I said, the smelting reduction route advantage is that it is a, a single reactor. You don't require the coke oven plant, sinter plant, and all these things. So this is what I wanted to show you in this lecture. And then, thank you very much.